What I really want to get across to people is that no matter what type of circumstances that you have been raised in or have experienced, you always have the ability to find a way out and create success for yourself. And I had to do that in my own life. And it was not easy. And, and when I look back, my childhood was very rough. Um, I grew up in South Central Los Angeles. Uh, I was a person who uh, was in a single family home. It was my mother took care of four of us by herself and she struggled and we were on welfare. We didn't have money. And sometimes we didn't have food to eat. And uh, we didn't know any different. But what the difference was, was when we would go past, at the time it was, USC was close by us. Mm -hmm. And I'd see all the college students go towards the campus and I thought to myself, where are they going? What, what are they doing? Why do they look different than the rest of the people that are in the, the group? And, and that always kept in the back of my head. And our mother said, whatever you do, in order to change your circumstance, you're gonna have to get an education. And so I, I kept that in the back of my head. I, no matter what, I had to, educate myself, I had to get a degree. I, the people that I saw going to the school down the street, that's something I could do and I had that vision. And it, it through a series of circumstances, uh, it was very rough. Um, and when I was 10 years old, I was sitting next to this boy in this classroom and he and I got into an argument and because we were two kids in the same position, same location and time, but our choices were different. And at that moment in time, we got into an argument. And I always had a smart mouth. I always had a way to be <laughs> able to push buttons because I, 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 I didn't know the power of my words back then. And now I do, and, and now I actually embrace that. But at the time, I was a 10-year-old child. I was pushing buttons, and he got upset, and he stood up, and he hit me right underneath my eye. Mm. And I remember uh, all of my entire vision going dark and hearing screams. And that's when I felt the wet on my face. And then I heard, oh my God, there's blood, there's blood. And I'm like, is that what the wet I feel? And I couldn't see anything. And part of it was kind of a blurred out because anytime we go through traumatic experiences, sometimes the brain actually just hides it. Mm. And then I remember being brought to the hospital and where uh, the surgeon put uh, five layers of stitches in my face. And he said, had this been any higher, you would have lost your eye. And I remember just being kind of like shocked. Here I was, this 10 year old child there, not necessarily knowing uh, what to do. It, but the, the surgeon said something that I'll always remember. He said, I'm going to sew your face so well that all you'll see is a line. And then when you get on TV in the future, all you'll see is a line. If you ever want to get rid of it, you can have plastic surgery. But I'm going to sew this up so well that when you get on TV in the future to tell your story, that's all they'll see. And here I was, this 10-year-old child, listening to this, and suddenly, for me being laying there, getting stitches in my face, I wasn't thinking about the stitches. I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna be on TV. I'm actually gonna be able to do something. And, and that was like the exciting part. And later on after that, my mother pulled me out of that school to keep me safe. And then she put me into this school completely on the other side of town. And it was a gifted school, gifted magnet. And I was with people who were brilliant. They were geniuses. And I was nowhere near <laughs> how brilliant these people were. And I, I remember finding myself having to listen to what they were saying because how they said it was in different words than I used. I, I spoke with a broken English and that was the type of environment that we're in because we weren't taught the proper way of, of speaking English and I even had an accent before. And I remember being around these individuals in uh, I remember just listening to their voice and thinking they're using words differently than how I use it. And I, I studied how people spoke. I was gonna say, so I have a theory about the inner cities. So the inner cities, um, so I went to USC and did some big brother-like work in the inner cities and really got a sense of- Thank you for what doing it, that. Oh, for sure. Oh, that, that's a whole you. another story for another day, which doesn't touch what you've done, but, um, being there and seeing that you yeah. begin to get a real sense of the adversity that has yeah. to be overcome and i believe that most of the people that the inner city touches it destroys but every now and then it creates somebody extraordinary what was it that made you listen what was it that made you say i i'm going to adopt that i'm going to learn that i'm going to get out of this like why doesn't that happen to everybody you, you pose such a great question when you are expected to succeed 
by your mentors or parents or, or teachers, when there is an expectation on your life to do well, at an early age, you adopt it, you address it, you adhere to it, you create it. But if you are never given that opportunity to know what you are capable of doing, if you are never given that, uh, that word, that encouragement, that says, do you know what, you can be good at mathematics even though you failed algebra and geometry and calculus and chemistry, That's which I did, crazy. you can actually do well in mathematics. If, if there's not someone showing you your worth when you can't see it, you'll forever be looking in the mirror thinking that you are not worth what you are. And for me, every single time I went to, I went to that school across town, it was like around two, two hours away from where I was. Every time I would come back, it was like a, a, a wake up call. I would go to this school that was like in a predominantly well off area and everyone had books and, and paper and really nice shoes. And I remember looking at this thinking, oh, I don't have any of that. And every time I would come back into my neighborhood, I would see the graffiti and I'd see the, the trash. And I thought to myself, what makes a difference? Why are there people here in this situation versus here in this situation? And every single day I would come back and it came down to this. It was the thinking, how we think, how we look at situations, whether or not we see ourselves doing well and being successful or versus if we see ourselves as a, a not successful person in an environment, our thinking defines our life. And when we can take hold of our thought and see it for what it is and change it and transform it and change it to convert it into an energy that unleashes a brain power that allows us to change a situation, that, my friend, is how we change our lives and that's how we change everyone else's life. Every place has its pros and cons. Really great places will still have a con to it. Uh, really horrific places will have a benefit to it. And it's all how we see a situation. Mm. Uh, every time I was bused into that school, I felt, oh wow, I get a chance to learn. But at the same time, I realized how superficial it was. Everyone uh, looked at each other based on what they owned versus what, how, what their character was. And so I saw the benefit and the detriment of that situation. And then when I came back home and was bused into the area, immediately when I came off the bus, it was like, all right, how do I make sure I'm not shot down? Uh, this is literally what right. went through my head. Your mom used to make you guys sleep, sleep. with your feet to the, yeah. the street side. Yeah, and it, it sounds, it, when I say this now, I realize the well, character. Well, tell people why, though. right? Uh, when I was, uh, when I get off that bus and then I uh, come home, there was a lot of gang violence mm -hmm. and I was very thankful to be able to get home. And once we got inside the door and inside the house, we're like, okay, we're somewhat safe. Uh, but there was a crack house next to our house. And my mother had decided to go back to school uh, shortly before they had moved in. And she went to night school, and when she found out that there was a crack house, she had to drop going to night school to stay at home to keep us safe. And uh, there were, she put up this metal on the side of the wall, and she had to sleep in the bed in a certain direction. And she said, I'm having you sleep this way, and I'm gonna put this metal up so if a bullet comes to the wall, hopefully it hit the metal first. Mm. And if it pierces through the metal, at least it will hit your feet and not your head. And this is where we grew up. And I remember m making a note to myself, I will do anything and everything to make sure I am not gonna place myself in a situation like this and I'm gonna get an education so I can encourage other people to be able to succeed in life. And that was my decision because I, no one should have to go through that. But the beautiful part about going through that is, no matter what type of situation I faced in the future, if I could get through that, I could get through anything. Yeah, and I mean, knowing your story, it's like, okay, that was already insane to be able to get over that. But going from that, then you go to, in, in your TED talk, the way that you told the story is really interesting. You're like building it up and in 11th grade, I finally meet this tutor and he teaches me, you know, how to do calculus and I'm finally getting it. I realize I can do it and I take the AP test and I want to tell you that I passed. No, I like failed it. I like so failed how do you go from that to like fifth in your class? and graduate with a degree in mathematics when people are telling you to quit, by the way. Oh yeah, oh 
yeah, so like yeah. what what's going on in your mind what are the mindset pieces that you're putting together to not let people stop you to not let naysayers slow you down like what are you doing mentally? It was a mental challenge, I must tell you. And and uh, what happened was I was failing algebra. I failed algebra. I failed geometry. I failed uh, what, what, calculus and chemistry. And uh, there was this calculus teacher that said, all right, I'm going to offer uh, calculus tutoring for anyone who's willing to come to the campus during the winter break. And I thought everyone was going to go. And uh, I didn't even have money to go at the time. And I thought, this is an opportunity. Someone's going to tutor me. This is great. And, and I remember specifically, it cost $1.35 to get on the bus, to, to get the bus there and back. And I didn't even have that. And I will never forget, it was the gas tenant. It was like it was like a local gas station. It was a gas tenant. He knew I was so dedicated to go to school. He loaned me, not loan, he basically gave it because I never had a chance to pay him back, but he gave me $1.35 each way so I could catch a bus two hours to get to the campus That's cool. and sit there. And I thought everyone was gonna show up. There was only myself. Wow. And, and I thought to myself, this is such a blessing. And I sat there and I, I picked his brain. I'm like, how, how do I look? What does an integral mean? Uh, what does the, the tangent mean? Uh, what does the instantaneous rate mean? And these are all words for derivative and, and calculus. And I got a chance to sit down with them. And that was the first time ever that I realized I was smart. And when I sat with him, uh, it was amazing because I realized what was stopping me was my own fear. It wasn't it wasn't anything with my educational aspect. It was me thinking I couldn't do well in mathematics. And when I learned to remove that fear and think, I'm gonna do this no matter what's gonna happen. I may fail it, I may not fail it. I'm gonna do well at this and I'm gonna just, just see where it goes. I'm gonna put my all into it and we'll find out. I put my all into it and I felt, but it, it, something inside of me shifted. I realized, Hey, failing wasn't that bad. If I can, if I can like spend a little bit more time at it, I can actually do really well at this. And that was the shift in thinking. I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna spend some more time in it and I'm gonna actually get this. And I went to uh, Cal State Northridge and I'm very thankful that was the best school I could have gone to uh, for me personally. And I went to Cal State Northridge and my first job that I had was a math tutoring job. And I scored, uh, because I had taken calculus and I'd taken those classes over, I scored relatively high on the placement test. Mm. And so the job, the o this is how ironic life is, the only job that I got first when I was in college was a math tutoring job. That's ironic. I know, isn't it? And I remember telling the boss that hired me, the late Jane Mrs. Pinkerton, God bless her, I told her, I don't know half of this stuff. <laughs> 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 and, and so she says, that's all right, just sit down with him and just read the book with him. And I looked and I'm like, are you sure? And she said, yeah, just, just sit down and read the book with him. I'm like, okay, I mean, if I get paid to do this, sure. And so I, I, I sat down with the, with the uh, students and it was, they were, it was stressful too because I didn't know what half the terminology or anything was in the books. And I would sit down with him, I'm like, okay, I'm here to tutor you. You're like, well, how do you do this? And I, I just tell them the truth. I have no idea. I'm going to read the book with you. And they thought I was joking. <laughs> and so we literally sat and read the book together. And I found myself reading the algebra books, reading the geometry books, reading the calculus books, reading the statistics books, literally reading and studying. And I thank Jane Pinkerton because had she not hired me into that role, I would not have graduated top five wow. out of a 6,500 graduating class. It was because I sat down and worked with the students. I had, to, when I overcome my own fear, it was when I was working with someone else and recognizing that the person next to me was the exact mirror of myself. And as if, as I could help that person right next to me, I was helping myself at the same time. And it became this teamwork. Every single person on the campus needed mathematics. And so I got a chance to know everybody on the campus and became one of the most popular people because everyone needed mathematics. And that confidence that was built from taking something that I failed at before and shifting my thinking about it and embracing it 
to actually create a new reality for myself. That's what empowered me. And that's what allowed me to graduate top of my class, which later on opened up the door to launch rockets. It's incredible. 